All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for attending. And definitely tell us what's on your mind. That's what we're here for. Um, call to order flag salute. Tell me if I'm doing it right. Flag salute. Okay. I pledge allegiance. Okay. Uh, roll call, I guess. And then Chair Guerrero is absent. Uh, Commissioner Lopez. Commissioner Sanchez. Present. And um, Commissioner Quill. Present. And then Commissioner Flores is not going to be here. Commissioner Armstead. Here. Commissioner Lewis is absent. And then Commissioner Morales. Here. All right. We have quorum. Okay. Um, the administration of oath. Um, is there anybody that uh, wants, would like to speak today? Public comment or anything? Please stand and raise your right hand. Okay. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you're about to give before this body will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If, please, if so, please say I do. And then did you just fill out a slip yet? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, any items from closed session? It looks like none. No? Okay. Public comments not on the agenda? None? Okay, let's proceed. Is there anyone wishing, oh, anyone wishing to speak on an item not on the agenda? There's nobody there. Uh, consent agenda? Yes, good evening, commissioners. On the consent calendar this evening, we have one item, which is the uh, recommendation for the approval of the minutes for the meeting of January the 11th, 2022, instead of 21. Um, they are complete as presented, please. I'll make a motion we approve those minutes. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And none opposed? So moved. Okay, consent, uh, do I have to uh, go over the consent items? Do no, I that, that? that was the consent item, it was the minutes. Ne next ahead. item is uh, for the uh, non-public hearing items. Next page, please. Oh, non-public hearing, item number two. Yes, Staff item. report. Yes, please. Um, item number two, um, Stephanie Sanchez is here this evening to kind of give you an update on the uh, on some of the economic development activities, kind of introduce you or reintroduce you to the economic development portions of the city's website. Um, we've been, dis um, in the past, we've discussed kind of how to navigate through the general plan website. So she will um, show us that um, and also show you some of the exciting things she's been doing for our marketing for the city. And um, with that, Stephanie, if you'd be so kind. Thank you, Oliver. Good evening, Planning Commission. It's different being on this side of the podium for once. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tonight I'll be providing you an update on a few different things that we've been making updates to and some changes. Um, so to the city website, to the general plan website, also some new city marketing that we have available and our new social media. So I'll start with the city website. Um, on the homepage, we do have information um, about the general plan. We also have, uh, if you'll notice down at the bottom, development projects. Um, this is to replace the major projects list that you may be familiar with. So we used to have a very extensive Excel spreadsheet that listed every single major project that planning was working on, where it was located, what it consisted of, what stage it was at. This is now here to replace that. Um, you have a question? If we want that detail, can we get it? It that you had on the Excel sheet? If you let me continue, I'll show you exactly where to get it. So in that development projects, it now is an interactive map. So it will list each individual project. It'll list each location, the address. Um, there are different tabs for different types of projects. So your first screen is going to show all city development, so commercial and retail. You also have um, all housing as an individual, all commercial and industrial as an individual map, and it'll pinpoint the different locations for you. 
up there at the top, you'll see that you can click to see the full size view, and this is what it'll look like. So it'll give you a full overview of the city, depending on which tab you click on, um, everything will be color coded, uh, everything is sectioned out. We even have a section for our commercial cannabis. Now that it's grown a little bit more, we do list the different sites where they're located, and these are all permitted and approved by the city. Continuing on to the city website, like I mentioned before. Oh, yes. You might not like to ask a question. Sure. When you say these are all permitted, these mm -hmm. go on there after they're permitted? After um, they've been approved, yes. After they've been issued a building permit? No, after they've been approved to proceed. So they're issued an approval letter, that means they've gone through the process, and then at that point, then they go in for their building permits, their TIs, everything else subsequent to that, until they're issued a cannabis business permit. Mm -hmm. For right now, I'd like to put on my Chamber of Commerce hat. Okay. And I know because of COVID, we haven't had any, but before I was able to, uh, oh. before I was able to bring a report, the report that was made before, and go over some of the projects. This takes the place of that report. So we'll be able to see what has been submitted and what stage it is into the process. So the projects that are listed on here, depending on the different categories, so are all the city development, the housing, commercial industrial, these are all projects that have already gone through the entitlement process, have been seen by planning commission, and this is what the public can look to to see what's being developed in each location. So it has to be approved at the planning commission level, or if there's you know smaller projects that are of significance at DERC, we'll list those on here. Okay. But you can get additional information on different projects by asking staff if there's others that you'd like information on. So maybe to answer your earlier question, that Excel sheet that you were referring to no longer exists. Mm -hmm. um, it became an exhaustive um, exercise and so, and, and um, rather outdated from a technology standpoint. So we're looking at a way to, uh, to revitalize and, and be able to follow what's going on, you know, in the city. Um, so um, as Stephanie was mentioning, they make it. They make it on the website when the uh, when an application comes before either you or the Development and Environmental Review Committee. The entitlement act, if it's a CUP or a development permit, and once action has been taken, it makes it on the big board, and then you can follow its progress. You know, okay, it was approved by the Planning Commission. Okay, they're in plan check now. Okay, they're under construction. So you'll see it, a project will evolve from the renderings to to final pictures. You know, you know, here it is. You know, you know, kind of a thing. If we wanted that, those are in the, just so I understand this, these are individual projects. If I wanted a comprehensive, there is no comprehensive. We I have do to not. Well, each one. There, there's a way. Um, I don't know if you can if you can quarry that. We can quarry that from the IT department. Um, I don't have a a, a technology. Uh, expertise on, on that I will tell you that it just it, it took too many frankly it took too many person hours to complete uh, because we were it, uh, Commissioner Quill recalls we uh, we we tracked every we we uh, updated it every month and so every time it came in when it came into plan check so what we do is we would take that list let's say we would take February's list right at the end of February then we would have to have one or two people sit at the computer and go through each one and say, okay, let me look this item up on our computer system. Oh yeah, it's still in plan check, still in plan check. Okay. Go to the next one. Okay, that came out of plan check, it's out for it's out for comments. So they so they literally would item by item updating it to do the oh it, it came back into plan check and so it's in its third plan check, its second plan check, or it's out for corrections or or uh, they were issued a grading permit, they were issued a building permit, the inspection was completed on the grading activity. The foundation, the foundation was, uh, you know, uh, was signed off. You know, so it was, it was, um, it was, it was updated to that detail, yeah. and. Um, so to to build on that, we're really trying to do two things: to create a visual for people to see where the larger projects are happening, so they can see overall in the city what's happening and where. We're also trying to get members of the public to use the tools that are readily available on the website to gain additional information. This is all at the fingertips of every member of the public on there. So to get a more comprehensive 
you know, information list, this view can be used or it can be brought up at any of the meetings that you're at. It's accessible through the mobile device, you can bring it up on a computer, but this will give you an overall city look at where that development is happening. But, okay, what if, I didn't want the details, I just want a list of what projects are open. I don't need to know where it is in Plantic, et cetera. Just, we've got 30 open projects, and then I can go, oh, we got 30, let me see if I'm interested in this one, then I can go and click what I want. Do we have that kind of list? We do not. Yeah, as, like Oliver was explaining, it came to, it became too extensive for staff to maintain on a regular basis with the amount of information that we had to pull to create that information. So, asking, so instead, we've created this that you can see all the projects visually. But what I'm asking for is not the details, just we have a project on I Street, and we have another project on J Street, and we have a project on North Park. That's it, not details, just this is a list of projects, and if you want details, here you go. We don't have anything like that. We don't have a list maintained of that nature, no. Are developers or contractors or <clears throat> homeowners that have submitted applications for, for permits, are they able to track their permits on the website? They are. Okay. Yes, there is a public portal to our system that's um, available on the city homepage, and I'll show you where that's at. To, oh. So it's actually uh, under the residence tab on the right hand side, that yellow icon. That's where anybody of the member can click and track any permit or any entitlement that has been entered into the system or submitted. So if I may add to that, so let's say you're driving down, down one of the streets and you see um, some demolition going on or some construction that's happening and you, you wonder, hey, I wonder what's going on there, right? If you take down either the address or um, there's a you can you could log on to our system you could type in the address and it'll 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 tell you oh yeah there were permits that were issued or there was a cup that was approved there there you know so that's that's entered regularly so if someone's curious as to what's going on um they can they can follow okay now i know what's being built there and how do you track that by an address or a parcel number both or? both <clears throat> that's that's why we're really trying to let the public know these tools are available to look up anything that's going on in the city and it's through that portal okay and so a file is started when somebody submits an application mm -hmm. okay so the application comes back to them for corrections it's dated in there and so that can be followed also correct, correct. <clears throat> thank you yeah so by address parcel number and activity number thank you okay so as we keep going, so back to the city website, the general plan information is on there, and this is the um, quickest way to get to the general plan website. It's gonna take you here, and this is the home page, the landing page for the general plan. So on here, there are different tabs for information. So this is gonna give us um, our overview. We do have our public participation. We are in the process of updating this map, or the um, forecast, of items that we are working on because the timeline has changed a little bit, but the public can stay updated on uh, the project overview and what's happening and what that schedule is. Under participation, this is where the public can learn what workshops are happening, what meetings are happening, what can I attend, where's the information coming, and this is how the public can get involved with those workshops so that we can get them out, we can listen to what they have to say, this is how they get involved. Under resources, uh, we have different documents listed, so different historical documents, um, anything pertaining to the general plan and what we're working on. They can look at all of these documents, download them, read them. So these are all resources for the public to look at during this process. There's also an FAQ page for frequently asked questions. They can go on there to get a little bit more information. Uh, they can read through all the questions. If they have additional questions after looking through the website, they can contact us. So we do have a dedicated email. We do have a phone number that they can call. They can even sign up for updates at the bottom of the page in that orange box. That way, anything that gets posted to the website, any new information we have to share, they'll be put on an email list and they'll get that information right away. On to the new city marketing. So this is what I am really excited about. Um, the city has not had updated marketing material for a little over eight years now. 
So this is something that I started to work on to be able to market to developers, new companies coming in, people having questions about our city, what are we doing, what are we generating. Um, so we really focused on three different aspects, commercial, industrial, and housing, because those are our three driving forces right now. So this will give us our city demographics. It'll tell everybody what our vision is. Uh, currently, that is incorporated into our budget. And we also have our major employers, um, different stats for developers to look at, for people with housing developments to look at. On the inside, uh, we have projects that have been approved, entitled, and built over the last three years. So not only did we focus on three elements for the city, we focused on the last three years. So all of this has happened and all this growth has happened in the last three years and the city is really proud of it. Um, our top 10 businesses are also listed and we also have a visual of some of the businesses that are called out that have um, come to the city in the last three years. So this is a brochure that is available. I will have some for you to pick up if you would like. You're more than welcome to take some with you, hand them out, talk to people about them, get people excited about what's been happening. Along with that, we also created a video that will bring this brochure to life. So that, along with the new city brochure, is something that we started handing out in December when we attended ICSC. So handing it out to different developers to entice them, different companies that we'd like for them to come into the city. So this is just the beginning of our marketing efforts. It'll be available on our city webpage. It'll be available on social media, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, but this is just the tip of what we'll be putting together here in the next coming years. Also, some exciting news is City of San Bernardino is in the Inland Empire magazine for February. We are also in the special February edition that lands in hotels in the Inland Empire. So uh, that reader base is 660,000 readers. We will also have a book in over 3,500 guest rooms in the Inland Empire, and that stays for a year. So this uh, portion of the marketing will let people know. On the left, it gives them information about why you should come to the city, what you can see, different attractions, different museums, where to eat, gets them excited about us. On the right is some of our uh, marketing material that we've just put out. Um, that way we can show them a little bit of both. So with that, this will be going on our new social media pages. So Community and Economic Development has both a Facebook and an Instagram that will be sharing information about the general plan, about new developments, new projects. Um, so I would encourage you to all take out your phone, get on your Facebook, and um, search for us. So I'm sorry that the, uh, the editing on that is a little off, but it is SB City CED. So you can follow the page, you can share it, tell other people about it. Um, but this is where we'll be sharing a lot of our new information um, about projects coming into the city and things that we're doing for the general plan and updates, different workshops. So look for that on there, like it, share it, get it out there. So that is all I have. Yep. Is there anybody wishing to speak on item number two? That is a beautiful job. It looks very nice. Uh, Thank you. Congratulations. 
Um, again, the Chamber of Commerce hat would like to ask. Um, over the years, we measure our city and cities around us by how friendly we are to develop developers. And I don't know if there is a measuring tool or some sort of a way to to figure out how much time is involved going through the planning and building process. Right now, it seems like uh, every city is very busy. And um, it'd be real nice if we were able to tell prospective developers to bring their projects to San Bernardino, and we will turn them around quicker than if you go to some other area. I don't know if that's available. Um, I know that we do send some of our plan checking out. I think the majority of it, probably. Uh, when I was a contractor, <clears throat> we would think, send things to Will Dan. Sometimes uh, items fall through the cracks, and it takes more time than we'd like it to take. But I just was wondering if there's any tool that measures the success or failure in cities to be able to turn projects around quickly. I don't know if there's such a tool, but um, without sounding too defensive, I guess, what we experience, um, some, it, it, all, it all comes down to the completeness of an application. And I can, and I can speak for, the, uh, uh, like, let's say a conditional use permit that comes in. And so if you notice on our agenda, um, you know, you'll see items that are, it starts out like CUP 21-something, okay? If it's a 21-1, it was probably filed at the beginning of the year. That was the first, the first CUP that was filed in the year, so uh, consequently you see a CUP 20 or 30 was probably, it was probably more recent. Um, you know, we, when we receive an application that comes in, you know, we, uh, we work with the applicants and, and, and there's always the, uh, you know, the back and forth, you know, because usually they, they're missing something, we need additional information, they have to do environmental documentation. And so, um, you know, it's a, I, I always tell folks it's a team effort kind of a thing. And so we're working together to get your item before you this evening, as, as, as an example. And so, um, you know, the, when you look at the resolutions, as an example, so if you look at any of the items like conditional use permit that we have for the self-storage facility, you will look on the first page of the resolution, it'll say, whereas on such and such a date, the application was submitted. So that can, that'll can that start to give you a little bit of, of the timeline. It doesn't mean that since that date it was sitting on our desk for three, four months, five, six months, and nothing was happening. That's what we just decided out of the blue to bring you to a public hearing. So there is a lot of, there, there is a lot of documentation and back and forth on that. Um, likewise, on, on, the, uh, on the construction drawings, you know, there's, you know, there's a, a lot of detail that goes into those, as, as you know, Commissioner, and um, it goes through plan check because there's a certified licensed engineer that goes through and makes sure, you know, plays the English teacher, makes sure that everything, everything's correct. Um, very rarely does a, does a project get submitted in the plan check and come back out the first day, say, with, with, with the approval. Um, and so um, we, we could only control um, you know, our side of it, you know, the, the completeness or the thoroughness of applications that come in or drawings is something beyond, beyond our control. And the best I could say is that when, when we receive something to review, that, that, that's, that goes, that goes um, you know, in a, in a timely manner. You know, the question always comes up, how long, does it uh, how long is it going to take before we go through plan check? And, you know, the, every, you can pick up the phone tomorrow, you can call any city in California, and they're going to say it's between 10 and 15 days, you know, around two weeks. For your correction, for your to go through plan check, right? But that doesn't. That's that's for them to review it, and, and then you get your all your red marks on your plans, and it doesn't it doesn't speak to how long it takes the architect to resubmit it, right? Um, and it doesn't speak to the thoroughness of the resubmittal. In, in many, we were looking at a project earlier today where we where we gave an applicant like I think it was 13 or 14 comments to revise on their plans. They, they, we didn't hear back from them for about three weeks. We got those plans back, and out of the 13 comments we provided, we only made two of the, they only made two of the changes. So, the, so we'll give them the courtesy, courtesy phone call tomorrow and say, okay, what happened to the other 11? You know, and so, you know, so, so, so there's a lot of that. And so uh, I, I don't mean to sound defensive by, by all means, but, but there's, you know, the plan check process involves two parties. Um, or it depends on how many de how many departments are involved, kind of thing. And that's another thing too; it's routed. So so planning will, will check some plans, engineering will check the plans. You know, the, if if there's a plum, if there's kitchen facilities or whatever, it goes into environmental controls. Everyone's looking at this. The water department, 
you know, the, the, you know, the, uh, the refuge, you know, um, you know, what is a trash, how's the trash collection going to go? So there's a lot of review in these things, a lot of moving parts. It's more than just, here's my plans, they're okay, and, 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 and now you go. And so, um, so that's, that's one thing, too, when we were talking earlier about tracking the projects, and, and someone says, well, you know what, well, Larry, they're, they're stringing me along. I haven't got my permits in four months. You could say, well, okay, look, what's the APN number? What's the address? You could type it in on our website. And you could say, well, it says here that you're on your fourth round of corrections. You're on your fifth round of corrections. You know, you're, and, and, oh, and by the way, you submitted it back in, in March of 21. You know, what, what, oh, and it says you, uh, you got your comments back in, in, in April, but you didn't resubmit until June. Surprise, surprise, that, that does happen quite a bit. Yeah, I understand, I understand that, and um, I appreciate that. Um, it's just too bad sometimes the developer or the person submitting the permit doesn't take all that into account because when you start asking them sometimes, there is really a lot of time involved back and forth. Um, so I understand what you're saying. At one time, the city was proposing an ombudsman program many, many years ago to help people with their plans and to help them take it through the process. Um, I'm not suggesting that's where we're at, uh, but it seemed to work well in other areas. So, but anyways, it's interesting to track that. And uh, I agree with you. We get calls at the chamber. We talk to people and uh, we don't hear about all the good things. We hear about the uh, slow things to some degree. Of course. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's nice to be able to have some answers for some people. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? I have a question. Sure. It's a beautiful presentation. It really is. Thank you. On the social marketing, if you want to go back to it. So this is our social media page. Are you oh, going oh, oh. back to the brochure? Well, right there, right there. Okay. Where it says top ten business types, are mm -hmm. those types that we have received so the top 10 business types you're gonna see in there um, there may be dealerships there may be fulfillment centers so it's the types of businesses that are our top performers okay so these are all businesses that are already in town that aren't necessarily new in the last three years but this is how our city is performing the industries that are performing the top 10 I wonder if it was feasible to have those that we would like to have desirable business types moving in uh, to the area. <laughs> um, so there are different types that you'd like to see come into the city that end up performing in the top well, 10? Well, I think developers sometimes need some guidance into what type of businesses we want in the city. Okay, so that would actually be a, a different conversation with developers. So this gives them an idea about what's performing really well. When we're talking to somebody about, you know, moving their headquarters into the city or a developer, you know, what are you guys looking for in this area? That's a different kind of conversation that we have with them and we let them know kind of what the vision is for that area, what the surrounding community is like. We'll talk to them about what the needs of that area are, what's in the specific plan. Mm -hmm. But this is just a guide to tell people what's really performing well in the city that we already have. Yeah, and if I may, I if I may add to I, that. I, I think it goes along with the vision plan for the general plan, mm -hmm. vision plan with the, with the downtown. Yeah, it's all tied Letting in. them know that we're open for these type of businesses, new businesses, and so forth. Right, and along with that, uh, Stephanie mentioned ICSC, which is the International Conference of Shopping Centers. It's an annual conference that's held in May. And so um, basically every, every developer that does business in the United States attends that thing. And so it's, uh, gosh, I, mean, I don't remember, we, we went on, they had a kind of a, a, a preliminary conference in December that Stephanie was mentioning where there were, um, it wasn't as, 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 many, as many vendors as we'll say or developers at that conference, but there will be in May. And, you know, a lot of the, uh, even before that, before that particular conference in December, you know, we, we, you get the questions, well, you know, what, what is the city looking for? What, you, do you have demographics? Do you have a marketing brochure? Everyone asks for a marketing brochure. And we, like Stephanie mentioned, we haven't had one. So, 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 so Commissioner Quill, you're, you're right. A, a business comes in town, comes to the chamber and say, hey, what can you tell me about San Bernardino? And, 
it's all just off the cuff kind of thing. Well, it's conversations and, and nothing's really uh, memorialized or, 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 or documented, if you will. So now we're, our, our goal with this, uh, with this marketing material is now we have something that's on our website. We can direct develop, you know, someone calls up, hey, um, what, what do we have? We can direct them here. We have demographics of, of the community and those things. Um, and then we could, um, you know, start to, start to, you know, because a lot of times they ask, hey, I'm looking to build X, whatever that type of project is, you know, a restaurant or hotel or whatever. We know what areas to direct them to, you know, kind of a thing, or what areas to stay away from. You know, well, you know, that, that type of use isn't appropriate for that location. You know, you really need to be down, you know, in, 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 a, in another spot. And so this is kind of a... Uh, we're, um, well, you know, this is all part of the, uh, you know, turning the city around. You know, as as, uh, as you mentioned, you know, we've we've been working diligently diligently on on these vision statements that that will be next on the agenda, um, kind of our, our dream big concept, I call it. And so, um, you know, we're 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 at a point where we are starting to, you know, you know, get the word out and, and a positive word um, of, of San Bernardino and what we have to offer, and, and we hope that you know those that those top ten types of businesses change. Um, because at one time, at one time, uh, we got a lot of applicants that were uh, ninety-nine cent stores and convenience stores, and that seemed to be about it. And nothing that brought in a lot of jobs or a lot of, you know, other amenities that we would have enjoyed. And that's why I'm asking the question. Right, and and like any business, you you go where the customers at. You know, you know, and so. Um, you know the uh, you know retailers or, or whoever they they do their market analysis and they determine you know where is their where is their customer base customer base going to be kind of a thing. Um, you also hear you'll hear the room the the term I should say um, when it's, when stores are looking to come in or whatever or you'll you'll, you'll say well why isn't there a market over in, in, in this location? Um, and as an example, uh, uh, to pick on Albert, but we have the Rancho Palma project that's up on the north end of town and we have that you know so we have 119 homes there. And if you recall, there's a there's a large site that's set aside for a for a shopping center for a for a market, and or even the other the other shopping center that's on on Palm just just right off of the freeway. There's there's some pads there for for future um, grocery store, and when we go out, we, we when we talk to some of these uh, you know, these grocery stores, these gro grocery outlets, first thing they say there's not enough rooftops. You know, they they're, they're their studies show and their their marketing goals show that you need to have so many households or rooftops in, in that area to support that that restaurant kind of a thing and so so that's why housing becomes you know becomes important you know you're not, not going to find a you know a uh, a Trader Joe's in the in, in the middle of nowhere you know kind of thing They're, they want they want concentrated but that's concentrated population so that's what that's what we're gearing for and so as an example we uh, when we go to I, when we went to IC and we're, when I see see this last uh, this last December and, and and we did talk to grocers and and that type and and we showed them that uh, that Rancho Palma site kind of a thing and they say well what are your roof types like well right now they're like this but look at look at these look at these other projects that are coming in um, it, it, in that area so um, you know as, as you may recall in the last last few meetings here we've had a couple of housing projects up in that area. And, and again, all that does is build up. And, and you, when you look at our findings, or when we say, you know, how it achieves our goals, and it said it helps us attain our, our housing targets and our and our economic, um, you know, enhancements, you know, kind of a thing. And so, it's, um, you know, sometimes we we, we it, uh, it's uh, natural to get a little impatient. You know, we we want things, but um, we also want to um, make sure that we we how we plan is systematic. You know, kind of, kind of but format. All that that you're referring to, that new development, is in the newer areas, and we have a lot of older parts in the city that haven't had new development at all for some time. Right, right. And as long as there is marketing of the area, as you describe, the convention and so forth and so forth, then that is acceptable. And since the general plan and the downtown plan cover areas specific to each one of the areas that it also include the older areas to the city you will um, right. so 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 uh, I think it's the next item on the agenda uh, I use an old term you'll be floored when you see what's being proposed or contemplated for uh, for the downtown and particularly the carousel mall site we do have the uh, 
the uh, representative of the development team for the uh, for the carousel mall here this evening that has a, a, a short video or maybe it's not too short but anyway <laughs> anyway a video to to show you on their on their concepts for for that and um it, it, it's very encouraging which and, and, and you know you've been Commissioner, you've been to some of the meetings and kind of see some of the forecasts and those kind of things we are at an exciting time you know and so um so yeah so so the, so we, we we do agree and I think we're all on that same page there yeah and Amelia just to reassure you part of my job now is to work with some of those areas that either have a vacant building or looking for tenants or looking for new businesses to come in I work with those properties they send me their marketing material and I work to make the connections between businesses and those vacant locations vacant offices so that is something that we're working on in the office I have many real estate <coughs> commercial brokers that we're working with. Yeah, so we work with them. They send us different brochures. We jump on meetings about a property they're trying to either sell or get a tenant into. They ask us what our ideas are. We reach out to different groups that may be interested. We brainstorm. So we're constantly having those meetings. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. We're, excuse me. We're on number three, right? Yes, that's two and three. Yes. Okay. So a question I have, I'm not sure sure where it fits uh, on the general plan when it comes to warehouses and storage facilities is that a general plan issue yes it is it is okay are we addressing that we, we have will, a lot we, of warehouses that's and later a lot on the storage. That, yes that's later on the agenda it is yes okay thank you you're welcome all right I had a quick comment um, I just want to thank staff Stephanie this looks amazing um, I was kind of going through it as I was reviewing our packets and it's actually really easy to navigate so uh, I applaud you on that because sometimes things can get really confusing um, how often is it going to be updated in terms of the new projects and whatnot so I am currently trying to get caught up from the holiday season on the map but typically what I would do is after Planning Commission I would look at that agenda see what items are approved see what needs to get put on the map at that point I'll update the map with an additional item different project add those uh, elevations the photos from it if there's any renderings add any information I need to in there um, so pretty much it'll be after each planning commission there'll be more updates okay so you're the one in charge of all of it yeah, correct perfect okay I think honestly it looks great and I think the video, the brochures will really actually help and kind of solidify us. Perfect. Make sure you take some before you leave tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Vice Chair Armstead, I recommend that you call for a motion, second, and a vote just to receive and file two and three because the presentation was for two and three. together I put a motion to pass items number two and three I well this item has been around for a little bit we've um, as you so um, so t this evening I um, just kind of wanted to provide you with a little bit of, a couple of updates um, at on the on January the 19th the downtown advisory committee held, held their sixth meeting they've been meeting up pretty much monthly and at that time they were presented with an update of the public participation activities and also a discussion of the refined land use districts for the entire area of the downtown um, area so those those are attachments to your to your packet you might have just, those are copies of the powerpoints that were that were done at that meeting and so with those particular items um, we're asking that you if you would kindly uh, receive and file the second thing that uh, that I'd like to discuss or we share is, is the vision statement for the for the downtown I had handed out um, at your at your um, at your spot we, we provided that and so I um, wanted to kind of walk you through a little bit so um, with the work of uh, placeworks that's our uh, consulting team that's helping us with the general plan and with the uh, downtown specific plan 
we've started with a series of, of, of workshops and community, you know, outreach and, and, and what have you. We've had a couple of, uh, we had downtown Charette where we uh, had it over here at the, in, the, in the Enterprise Building on a weekend and kind of gathered some, some input from some of the local businesses and, and um, interested, interested individuals. And so, and over the course of the last uh, several months, we've been working with the, uh, with the advisory committee on kind of the concepts for the downtown and also um, on the vision statement, which is before you um, this evening. Um, the vision statement is intended to be kind of a, 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 a living document, if you will, and it it'll, it'll, it's kind of sets the tone for, for the downtown. And uh, likewise with the general plan um, advisory committee, um, this is a, kind of a, a dream into the future kind of a thing. How, what would you want to see the downtown area to be like, um, you know, in, in 20 years? We'll say, and so um, you know. So before you, there's some on, on the first page of the handout. There's some some bullet points that were well, uh, well, uh, dialogue, a lot of dialogue and, and contemplation among the committee members' um, involvement, and, and that's what's before you this evening. I'll walk you through uh, kind of the uh, the evolution of the project, so you can um, you know, kind of see where we are and the uh, land use districts that we ended up in. So after the after the charrettes were completed. We looked at the downtown. If you look at on the, uh, as, as shown on the uh, on the slide, we broke it up into uh, di ten distinct di districts. So essentially, um, each each um, colored area will will have a different type of development. When I mean type of development, I mean in terms of intensity, from a standpoint of um, how many dwelling units um, allowed, how much how much uh, floor area ratio from a uh, non-residential type of development, and also for height. So um, essentially, as you get towards the center of the uh, of the specific plan area, the uh, the building height um, increases. And so this this is a depiction of the uh, of the ten areas. And uh, following here, I'll, we'll we'll break down. Uh, so this was a rough concept. What we did from here was we, uh, based on some of the co uh, meetings with the uh, advisory committee, we refined uh, we refined the areas. Um, define them by the uh, by the streets so it follows the street grid and so these are um, these are how they were broken up and then we will go into the, uh, the various classifications so we have the northern neighborhood um, is, is highlighted in the yellow and so that's essentially at uh, at 8th Street and so you will um, you know so it's because it's adjacent to the neighborhoods to the residential neighborhoods to the north those areas will be um, limited to two and three stories um, and, and again, that's and the uh, and the densities will will allow for, you know, approximately 700 dwelling units within those two areas at maximum build out. The the next area is is in that middle core there, which is the uh, the North Gateway. Um, this basically is it would be the entrance where you have E and and D streets that typically are those uh, streets that folks um, drive into town on. Um, it's, uh, you know, E Street is also where the, uh, you know, the XBX line comes through, so that's kind of the, uh, the entryway, if you will. And that particular area is, it's, uh, has a proposed for mixed use as well, and uh, four to five stories. We go over to the freeway adjacent. This, uh, uh, so the lower portion of the purple, that's kind of where the, uh, the Ford dealership is. And then as you go up, um, the... Uh, the, the horizontal piece on the on the upper purple is the uh, is Fifth Street, and so that's where we have uh, that's where In and Out Burger, Panda, the new uh, Gateway uh, development that uh, that's being proposed by ICO, and so th that's kind of the the entryway, kind of a freeway, just it's, it's kind of a, a thoroughfare to, to come in um, into the city. So then we have the uh, the, the transit neighborhood, which encompasses. A, uh, a portion of the, I guess the the two third westerly portion of the Carousel Mall site, and also encompasses on, on the lower, on the lower horizontal, the uh, you know the, the the transit center area. And so again, this is, uh, again this is a, a great, greater heights, four to eight stories, and and, and the densities are um, you know we're looking at about 90, 98 acres within that area. So this would be the downtown core. This uh, takes the other portion of the mall that faces on, on E Street, and also the uh, the, the Civic Center area it includes uh, City Hall, um, and some of the uh, some of the other the uh, the, um, the embassy and so some of the other government buildings that are in the downtown area, Caltrans and such. 
so then we have the county center. These are where the county offices are, are currently located. Um, again, the the, uh, the most west easterly, I should say, of the of the county mixed use campus. I believe that the county is working on some some concepts to develop those lands, so those uh, vacant properties, um, to uh, to develop there for county offices as part of their campus. And then we have the uh, the area that's along the um, Rialto, um, adjacent to the, um, the 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 rail line. And then, and then we have the transit center. This is where our, our transit center is. So they, they, it all leads to uh, to that. And so we kind of went through. Um, if by today's development code, if you took that area, it's approximately 600 acres in total, the entire um, boundaries. So if you were to take our, our development code by the zoning standards and such, um, today you could build approximately 1,300 um, units within that downtown area and the non-commercial or the, uh, or non-residential, I should say, commercial office and, and, and retail um, and food services is approximately 8.7, 8,700,000 square feet. That's what you could build today. So we took our projections based on how we de defined our 10 neighborhoods. And again, this is, uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, somewhere around, uh, you know, 15,000 dwelling units. Again, that would be at, at maximum. And then we have non-residential. We're looking at about 15 million square feet of non-residential uses at ultimate build out. So with that, um, like I mentioned earlier, would, would uh, appreciate if you would receive and file the uh, the, the, the first two items, the presentations that were handed out on the, uh, along with your agenda, and then also if you would uh, be so kind as to forward a recommendation to the City Council for the approval. There is no formal adoption. There isn't a resolution that's attached with this. It's basically a concurrence um, for the City Council to, to um, also consider. There. And again, there won't be a necessarily a formal resolution adopted for them. It would just be a um, this is the first step. And like I mentioned earlier, it's an evolving document. It doesn't mean that it's in concrete tonight. Um, and so um, as, as, a, as, a, as a specific plan proceeds, you know, as adjustments are made, you know, there's always an opportunity to go back and make some, make some commentary, you know, on this. Again, we, we, um, we, we ask the committee members to dream big kind of a thing. And so this is in the future. And, and uh, my, my, my favorite exercise that we did for the general plan um, group is we we had we handed out postcards right and we said okay um, so in this postcard write to a family member or a friend we're 50 years from now but you know imagine that it's 50 years from today and 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 write to your your cousin Louie or, or your sister or someone that lives in Kansas New York or wherever they live for 50 years from now and you tell them hey guess what I was just in San Bernardino I visited you know, I visited this thing, and this was, you know, you need to come out and see this, that. That's how we were thinking, that's what we were asking our committee members to, to envision, you know, it's, it's uh, um, rather than what we, have, what we have today, okay? So if you were to close your eyes and you were to take a snapshot of, of what the downtown would look like, this is, this is, this is what came out is um, through those visioning exercises with the uh, advisory committee. And so with that, I would um, ask you to do that, and, and maybe, uh, if you'd like, um, maybe uh, we could do, if I could uh, introduce, uh, you know, the team. We have uh, Mr. Don Monti and Ernesto Hurtado. They're here from the uh, RDICO development team. And maybe if you could, uh, would you mind? Say hello. And what, what, what they, uh, they prepared a, uh, a video for us. Um, it's, it's approximately 12. 15 minutes so just uh, um, I think this this kind of gives you a, a sampling of, um, of what the vision how this vision is translated into uh, into 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 a
key in this image is an aerial view of the proposed keratin wall development in a maximum build-up scenario. It is rendered to LOD2, we call this level of detail 2, which represents building massing. This way, we can color the building's floors by their proposed uses. As you can see, we have a mostly commercial ground floor throughout the walkable downtown with restaurants, stores, etc., and larger residential buildings above. We included a few commercial buildings that could happen, but of course, what will really be built will be determined by the market and enabled by a properly risk informed based selling code. Here you can see the same downtown with more articulated buildings. As we previously mentioned, the city leaders wanted to reestablish the historic street grid. We completely agree. Our proposed blocks are small to encourage walking and bicycling and people arriving at intersections more often. This is the LOD2 visualization again from another angle. We like shaded streets. This is why some of the blocks are turned 45 degrees and why we are suggesting a tree canopy throughout the downtown. This is the same view angle again, but with more articulated buildings. This rendering here shows only a sketch of the new city. We will co-create that with you in detail. There'll be a lot of housing for sure, but also supporting retail, entertainment, and commercial use, all as determined by market demand. We envision active sidewalks with high quality streetscapes, distinct neighborhood districts with a unique architectural character, and perhaps even with different tree species. The most impactful step towards sustainability will be to reduce vehicle miles traveled by making the city walkable. We'll use the latest green technologies and strategies, and as you can see, we plan for green roofs on most new structures. Imagine farm-to-table food served in local restaurants with produce coming from the building's roof. This is the street grid and mobility plan that is being created by Placeworks and KOA. In future iterations of our conceptual mall development, Plan. We will then integrate the streets and paseos we are suggesting on the mall site to seamlessly work with this larger network. Our streets on the mall site connect with the city streets and create a logical extension of the mobility network of the overall downtown through the mall area. And now, I would like to discuss some preliminary development timetables over the projected 12-year build-up period. As we have mentioned on numerous occasions, the goal is to get a shovel in the ground as soon as possible. In our initial analysis and in further discussions with potential development partners, the consensus appears to be that early development is likely to occur on property adjacent to the existing parking structures. This would alleviate self-parking requirements that could otherwise economically prevent this early development from occurring. Beyond this projected early phase of development, future phases will then be determined by market what we are showing now is what could be development patterns over the next 12 years that, which I must emphasize again, are subject to market-driven adjustments. What you are now seeing demonstrates what exists today and what future development patterns could look like throughout the next eight projected build-out phases over a 12-year development period. Phase one, phase two, phase three, Filling up the northern edge of the site nicely, we expect to construct the river walk during phase four, phase five, phase six, phase seven, and phase eight then completes the entire new downtown area on the small site. We strongly believe that with continued collaboration between the city, community stakeholders, and the RDICO team, as well as with the adoption of the much talked about form-based zoning code, that what we have shown here is absolutely feasible, even if not necessarily in the order that we have conceptualized. The next 12 slides are just providing an overview of the kinds of building types and designs. There are a number of residential buildings and commercial buildings that were generated through procedural algorithms rather than through the traditional ways of slow, cumbersome building design. To show you how much progress we have made with the visualization of the future urban environment, we imported the urban model into a high-performance visualization engine. Ethan Elkins is the genius behind this effort, and he can tell you a few words about it. Thank you, Gerhard. Hello, my name is Ethan Elkins, and I manage digital solutions for the RDICO project. We have taken 3D modeling and rendering to new levels 
with our best of breed solutions and deep domain knowledge of the area to create compelling representations of the potential of this dynamic region in Southern California. What you see here are some renderings of our initial site plan using twin motion software by Unreal Engine. As RDICO works with the city, its planning team, community stakeholders, and national developers to add details to the form-based zoning code and overall conceptual development plan for the Carousel Mall's redevelopment, you will see more of the urban fabric envisioned for downtown San Bernardino, such as the addition of shade trees, as Gerhard previously mentioned, as we reach each milestone of our performance schedule. And now, I will turn it back to Gerhard Meyer, who will show you some president imagery for discussion with the city. Thank you, Ethan. What inspires us in the creation of the new downtown on the mall site are, of course, the various successful examples we can find locally and regionally. This is an example from Glendale, the Americana as brand. By the way, our design for San Bernardino also includes a number of similar local parks. This slide shows an example from further up north, Santana Row in San Jose. Santana Row also offers us good examples for very nice walkable environments. So perhaps in the future, the streetscapes in San Bernardino can look a little bit more like this one from Santana Row in San Jose. The premier example for successful local placemaking on a grand scale is of course Playa Vista. It is quite a bit larger than the Carousel Mall, but if you close your eyes, one can imagine some of these images from Playa also becoming part of the new downtown San Bernardino. The 2009 vision plan by AECOM for the downtown in San Bernardino generously included water in the downtown. Again, we agree. We propose a Riverwalk loop attraction. It will make San Bernardino the prime urban destination for the Inland Empire. This Riverwalk won't be purely an aesthetic feature either, but it will help with stormwater management, help keep the buildings cool and the city green. And there is funding out there to support this. What you see here is, of course, the granddaddy of all Riverwalk redevelopments and our inspiration, San Antonio in Texas. The mall redevelopment should be a catalyst for positive change around it. Something like what the Transformational Climate Communities Program is envisioned to be. Our proposal is a public-private mobilization to rebuild the city all at once. Our inclusionary method invites the greater downtown areas to join the momentum for national developers as well as locals. A last personal note, I have worked in many places over the world, and I have long hoped for an opportunity like this. Never have I been involved with a team so uniquely positioned to make this happen. This is completely doable. When we visited with the city before COVID, what we heard from several council people was, this is the time for big and bold. Well, we are giving you big and bold. This video ends in the lagoon. The old city hall is just off screen, connected with an existing bridge. In a development project like this one, it's easy to imagine either a modernized or a newly built city hall as part of the process. Lots of locations and owners are struggling, looking for how to adapt their existing assets to the new norm. You are in the enviable position to start a new city almost from scratch, because here in San Bernardino, you'll get to define the new norm with few legacy constraints and point us all in a positive direction forward. In conclusion, we have fulfilled our next milestone requirement, which surely will evolve multiple times over the development period. What we wanted to do was give you an idea of what is now and what could be soon, perhaps. We look forward to advancing these concept plans, which can only be implemented once a form-based zoning code and the downtown specific plan have been adopted. If we were to use an assumption of $275 per square foot for overall development cost, spread over 4.5 million square feet, subject to further verification, of course, this would result in an overall project cost of one and a quarter billion. One and a quarter billion. With regards to a construction timetable, this could be soon, but it will be entirely dependent upon the adoption of the four-based zoning code, as well as the elements of a finally negotiated disposition and development agreement. And now, I would like to turn this over to our project manager, Ernesto Hidalgo, who will review some additional relevant facets of the project. Ernesto? Thank you, Gerhard, and thank you, City of San Bernardino, Gian, and Don, for bringing this long-awaited development from the point of merely being a dream 
to the point of actually becoming a reality. Downtown San Bernardino is on the epicenter of an opportunity zone, which affords enormous investment opportunities for developers and capital markets to focus on. The capital <coughs> management development alone represents an opportunity for the creation of 27,000 primary and secondary construction job years over the duration of the project's construction period. Many of those new living wage and high paying jobs, such as what you see here, will enable San Bernardino residents through proper job training and apprenticeship programs to not only participate in this overall redevelopment, but also to have the opportunity of actually living there. In addition, there will be thousands of permanent jobs created along with unlimited entrepreneurial opportunities. You've heard repeatedly that the time to think big and bold is now. What you see in front of you is big, bold, and attainable. We have studied the potential maximum theoretical build-out scenario for the Carousel Mall property, which can be accommodated in our conceptual plan as follows. Keep going, Ray. Yeah, 4,000 residential oh. units totaling approximately 3.25 million square feet. A myriad of commercial uses, as shown here, totaling approximately 750,000 square feet. Retail, restaurant, entertainment, and experiential uses totaling approximately 575,000 square feet. For a total build-up potential of 4.5 Seven five million square feet. That's it, Jess. So, uh, thank you, uh, Oliver and, and Jessica, for presenting the video. Commissioners, it's a uh, good evening. It's a pleasure to and an honor to be here with you. Thank you for your your public service. And I'd just like to share with you that you're actually the first to see um, this version of the video in in the public for, forum. Uh, we uh, met with the city's management team earlier today. Oliver, you were you were there, and uh, and so we, we got a really positive response um, from from the city's management team, and they felt comfortable enough to share this with you today, um, and that's why that's why we're here. So we're thankful for the opportunity, and I'll turn it over to Don to share a few words. Thank you, uh, I'm Don Monty, part of the RDICO team. And uh, pleasure to be here this evening. And uh, we were, uh, this is sort of spontaneous, but uh, sometimes things that happen quickly are, are good. It, it, I'm happy that we have finally gotten to show something because there are, a lot of people are wondering what's happening. And I can tell you that um, I'm very thrilled to be working with this city. Um, they're open for business. I can tell you I do this all over the country. And this is going to happen. I remember the evening that we were selected uh, by the city council as master developer. And I don't want to mention the council person's name that said this, but um, she said, uh, RDICO, please don't let us down. And uh, we're committed not to let anybody down. And, you know, projects like this don't happen overnight. But there's been tremendous progress. When you think about the magnitude of what's being done here, um, it's going to happen, and it's going to happen quickly. And the way it happens quickly is through, and I think Gerhard mentioned this a number of times, the form-based zoning code. It will create what we call a feeding frenzy amongst developers. And that's what you want. You don't want this to take 50 years to happen. You want it to happen as quickly as possible. But you want it to happen responsibly. So we're thinking about everything. This is, this is really mixed income. It's mixed everything. It's something that I think the city is going to cherish. Uh, and I can only say I'm really proud to be a part of it. Thank you. That, uh, that concludes our, our presentations. Um, again, the, uh, the, the video was just to kind of give you a sampling of of what uh, what a concept for the uh, carousel mall site is as um, envisioned um, through the uh, through our vision statement and through the specific plan specifically and so the uh, the, the the presentation that you saw was just just for that 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 core areas as, as was uh, shown on your earlier slides uh, at the uh, in the center of the downtown 
and the uh, the Carousel Mall site specifically. And so, I would be glad to answer any questions. Uh, we have the, the vision statement that's before you. Um, if you have any any thoughts that you'd like to share um, before moving forward, thank you. I have a comment. <clears throat> I have a comment. Very nice presentation. Thank you, uh, consultants and Oliver. Oliver, did I hear you say at the beginning the vision statement was a, was like a dream, a fantasy? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's what that's what well, we asked the community. That, what's what we, that's what we've asked our committee members. That's I don't what want we're you to, to do. use those words anymore okay. <laughs> because it downplays all of the work that the committee, along so with no. the consultants, have done in drafting the, the, the vision plan. The first step, our goal, mm -hmm. and. It downplays everything, and um, you can just say, you know, this is what we would like San Bernardino to be. I just don't want to uh, use dream or fanta fantasy or those type of words because then people get the idea that it really isn't anything. And this is serious business, as the consultant said. We want it to happen quickly and now and so forth that um, I don't want it to downplay anything. So I'm asking, you know, for you to watch your words. <laughs> I know you didn't mean anything by it, but um, I think it's important. I had a couple of questions, uh, mainly just to clear it, make it clear to me. Uh, one of the issues I would have is parking. Do each of those buildings have parking underground? Just curious. So, so again, we're we're not here to look at the project specifically, oh, no. you know. So um, this is just a the, uh, just a vision. Oh, okay. Okay, so that that, that that's all we're that's all we're asking, okay. and this this is this is how we are going to be, right? Um, you know, in, in in 12 years, you know, 20 years, this is what this is what we're planning, you know. And so um, this is the first step, and so what we're so um, as we were going through the uh, the presentation, it's like, well, okay, does does this type of development, you know? Lower stories, higher stories, you know, this type of use, as as with as in the handout, does that make sense? Um, we 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 believe that it does, um, and then we we'll, we'll be asking the city council to make that that same determination, and then we then we can go to the next steps, at which is um, putting together the the meat and potatoes, if you will, of the specific plan. We will be coming back. This is an exercise, and so um, you know, our next downtown advisory committee meeting, I believe it's in March. I don't remember the, the date uh, escapes me at the moment. I believe it's like the third Thursday or, or Wednesday. I, I don't recall at the moment. Um, someone's kicking me behind behind me, telling me what what it is. Um, and and so um, so it, so again, we'll be we'll be rolling out different different parts. Again, what what's the parking? What 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 is, what are, what are, what's the landscaping need to be like? What's the architecture need to be like? You know, all those all those kinds of things. And 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 those will be brought to you periodically. And also. Um, just as I've been on a on a on a monthly basis, as you, as you recall, I've been providing you with the with the powerpoints from the previous from the meeting that occurred. The, you you will still be getting those, so you could you could you'll see those presentations. And also, now that everyone knows how to navigate the general plan website, um, you could you could follow along also. And and, and and back to that item and the and the for the downtown, if someone were to to, to log on there, you know, today they can catch up. From, from from the beginning so you know so like so like a student comes in mid-semester you know now you can catch up with all the homework and see what has been done up until now so they can so now they can jump in and 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 continue the continue the participation without any loss of of any information or knowledge that was gained in the in the previous months of the exercise so so we will be coming back to uh, to the uh, both the advisory committee and the, and the down and the general plan um, advisory committee and, and and building those things and so you know, we still we still got a year or so not for the downtown downtown about uh, you know uh, by by summertime in there to to complete. Um, so that'll be that'll be coming to you, and you'll be able to follow along as as, as you indicated. And um, you know, the general plan is a, you know a, a little bit longer, but it, it it's a process. And so we'll be we'll be contemplating everything. You know, so there's uh, you know um, we'll we'll be able to anticipate all the questions and all the, all the issues, and and that's what we. Um, you know, we're, um, we, there's still going to be a lot of public participation on this. You know, um, you know, after tonight, we'll, we'll still be engaging in, in other community meetings. We're scheduling those. Um, we're also looking to, um, 
um, go back to the City Council. I think I had mentioned before that we are looking to um, make some changes to the public participation program, add, add, add some components, and, and uh, so that will be presented in, um, on March um, 2nd to the City Council to discuss um, here's, here's what more we can do to, uh, to engage the community and or to um, get greater participation. You know, we, we need people to come out to our to our workshops because that's where we gather the gather the information, and that's that's where it started with the downtown. We had some workshops, and we, you know, had some um, some you know visioning discussions, and and um, so that's what the the product of tonight is um, that we're asking you to move forward. So tonight, really, we're just approving the vision. That's what we're. That's that's approving, correct. The vision. Okay, I do have one question I see a river walk we got water issues how does that work just curious Southern California that, that's a, that's a great question the state is is suffering um, from uh, insufficient water resources at this time um, San Bernardino is a little unique in that there's a lot of water below the surface right um, and uh, when they asked us to think about a vision for this for this project um, two years ago, they asked us to look back at past plans from the city. Um, and so around 2000, the city had the rivers and streams uh, plan to really uh, take advantage of, of the natural resources that are abundant here. It's, it's almost like an oasis uh, in San Bernardino. Um, Unfortunately, that, that project you know, went so far, and you have some parks now that um, highlight that, but it didn't go as far as they were hoping. Um, in 2007, a panel of experts from across the country came as part of a, 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 a task force by the Urban Land Institute, right, the largest uh, organization of its type in the world. Um, and that panel of experts said, you should take advantage of these natural resources. Two years later, well, during those two years, um, subsequent to the recommendations from this task force, this panel from ULI, uh, the city and the redevelopment agency at the time were able to enlist AECOM and uh, EDAW, who were, uh, AECOM is one of the largest firms that does engineering and investments, transformative uh, capital projects uh, in the world. And uh, EDAW is also one of, one of the largest development firms back in, in its time. And, um, and so when we looked back, we actually um, did look at that, that vision and it, that was produced in 2009, and it was very thorough, very abundant. Um, lots of uh, uses of the, of the water amenities in the, in the downtown area, and we thought, what a wonderful opportunity um, if this is what identifies and makes San Bernardino unique from others and others have already come up with the idea and you're asking us to look at these plans, um, we said, what, what, what could we do? And we came up with this, with this concept. Um, since then, we've talked to two public engineering firms um, as well as um, a water expert. And uh, the feedback has been that in their, w without doing the complete due diligence that, that should be done, at, at a surface level, um, they, they feel like there's possibilities for this. We've also, we've also met with one of the water agencies in the city, and you know there, there are possibilities to this. We're still kind of in the dating phase. Uh, we're in an exclusive negotiation um, agreement currently with the city, so we, we haven't done all of that due diligence yet, um, but we've done some early um, due diligence, which I've, I've just shared with you, um, and we look forward to exploring that further, but at this point, we, we, we see that as a, po a real possibility, yes. Thank you for the question. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for being here and for working with the city of San Bernardino. Um, I'm really excited to see, you know, this kind of come to fruition. Um, as a younger homeowner, it's, it's really um, exciting for me. I have a lot of family, younger friends who are, you know, question why, you know, we decided to buy out here. And I just, you know, 
tell them there's so much potential here. Like truly, I'm, I'm really excited for this city. It, there's just so much to be done. And um, this just, you know, further like, um, you know, ex explains that. And so I'm really excited and um, it, uh, it's honored to be a part of the, the team here and looking forward to working with you. Yeah. I would also like to compliment you on this project. The, uh, the renderings and, the, um, and, all, and all the stuff that you provided, it looks real good. I do have a question, though, probably to Oliver, obviously. Um, so on a project like this, when it goes through the planning and permitting process, I would imagine, without a doubt, that we would be hiring another crew or another, another uh, whole department just to handle that for a project of this magnitude magnitude um, or would it be done in phases or would the planning all be done at one point and then permitting as they progress well well along with that so um, we um, as uh, mr. Monty indicated uh, part of the the downtown specific plan is going to have what we call a form based code concept yes and so um, that'll be different than our development code oh. okay and so so um, as, so uh, keep that in mind when we when we present it to you so essentially what it'll do is the the intent is to streamline the entitlement review process and so as it as an example when we once we adopt the specific plan and 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 the form form based code concept you've already contemplated what you'd like to see there right and so um, how those applications will be processed is uh, it, it, there'll be a consistency review so so if you're if you're up in one of the northern northern you know corners of, of, of the site and 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 you're and you're three stories and you meet the and you meet the density requirement and the landscape all, all the development standards it, it's pretty much um, to a point where it's going to be an administrative level review you know kind of thing and so um, it would have already been contemplated from a, from a land use perspective we already said that 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 um, um, Higher density residential are going, is going to be developed there. You know, there, we'll, we'll already know what the what the height limitations, what the architecture needs to be, or the non-residential, what the commercial uses are going to be. What you know, we're going to allow restaurants in this area, not in this area. And so, if you meet that criteria, it, you 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 kind of get to go to, you know, the the next square you pass, go and 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 keep moving, kind of a thing. We're contemplating if you want to deviate a little bit from that, then that's when it adds more of the discretionary where we'll come to the commission and say, well, you know, we said it was going to be like this, but they want to do a little bit, something a little bit different, and then that, that, will, be, uh, that will be discussed as it relates to the, uh, the environmental review for the project. And so, um, as you saw on the, on the presentation, I think of what it said, uh, uh, 4,000, you know, up to 4,000 units and X amount of square, square footage of, of non-residential so there is going to be an environmental impact report that's prepared for the downtown specific plan. And so basically it'll, it'll contemplate all of the potential environmental impacts if it were built out maximum. You know, it, it, it may be a little bit less, but if you, it, you know, um, the highest case scenario, it, it, it'll evaluate it. So then again, so, so um, at, at the staff level, we'll be able to say, well, okay, as long as you're within the thresholds, you know, the square footages and, and those kinds of things, you're okay. It's already been evaluated by CEQA and, and, and those kinds of things. And so, um, but those are, those are further discussions. We, we have had those, those conversations because, um, you know, um, you know, wh whether it's staffing, you know, or, or, or how that, how that's yeah. done, but, um, there, there have been those conversations already. Well, thank you for explaining that. I didn't understand what a form base code was. So All right. Appreciate that. Well, you are welcome. You. Yes, I have the last comment. Um, I want to thank everyone who's participated in this. Um, I've actually went to some of those workshops, so doing those vision plans and things we wanted to see in the city, I think it was really well incorporated in here. I especially like kind of the uh, existing land use map because it really demonstrates what San Bernardino is and how diverse we are, how many little faucets of history and culture we actually have. Uh, so I, I liked seeing that on, on a map. And then the proposed plans, the renderings were, were actually really very impressive. And I thank you for your, you know, your diligence and everything. I know it's not to the full extent since we're in the dating phase, but 
it really did show your guys' uh, interest and dedication and, and hearing about these different reports about the river walk and, you know, that's something that I didn't really know too much. Uh, you know, we are called Lido Creek and we have certain things that have water references. And I know back in the day there was something like that, but for the most part, California is saying we're pretty dry. So, so it was kind of a nice feature uh, to learn about. So thank you for, for your hard work. If I may, uh, commissioners, um, for clarification, so we do have the vision statement that's before you, and along with the, uh, we also, the vision statement also includes the, uh, the downtown land use uh, map, which was the, uh, the, the presentation that we showed, so it includes both of them. That the, the land use map is part of the vision statement, if you will, just for clarification. Uh, motion to accept uh, item number four. Good evening, everybody. Vice Chair Armstead, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, okay. I would recommend that we receive the staff report first before we hear public comment, if that's okay with you. That's what we normally do. Excuse me, sir. No problem. You can return. We'll, we'll call I'll, you back up. I'll come right back I'm up. I'm sorry about I that. I won't be far. <laughs> okay. We know where you are. Thank you. Okay, so so I so so item number five is the as an update on the uh, on the general plan. Um, so in January on the 19th, we had our general plan advisory committee meeting, and at that time again they they provided uh, kind of a summary of the public participation activities for the previous month, um, which are which are included as part of your packet. There was also some ongoing discussions of the land use planning. I believe it was a second second discussion. On, on that particular item where we started getting into the land use concepts, kind of the, the, the history, some, some maps were created and, were, and are still going to be, um, that'll be part of the still continued discussion at the, at the next uh, advisory committee meeting as well. So that's, that's ongoing. Um, and so those are included as a, as a receive and file item for you. Um, also before you is uh, the vision statement for the, for the general plan. And so that with, that's a culmination of of an exhaustive effort, you know, you may re you may be aware that we've had uh, the workshops at each of the wards. So we uh, we did visit, um, you know, all seven wards and and solicited comments. There were exercises of of uh, visioning from the different areas. You know, what do you want to see from from ten from transportation, from from um, land use, open space, um, housing, um, you know, just a just a different um, quality of life areas, parks. Uh, so there was a. Uh, uh, a lot of exercise on that. We solicited a lot of those comments. Um, we did field a lot of comments on our website in terms of the questionnaires, and and um, so as a result of that, and, and, and also with the on ongoing dialogue with the uh, advisory committee meeting, um, you, a, a, a vision statement was was developed for that. That is that is before you this evening. Um, I don't know if uh, Woody, would you like to share anything else on that or? Woody, Woody uh, Tesher is um, our, our lead consultant from PlaceWorks, and uh, I, I, I know he's itching to say something that I probably forgot to say. Um, but um, like I said, this this has been, um, you know, there was a, an exhaustive amount of, of, of workshops and meetings and, and such, and um, so we're at a point where, again, a vision statement so that we could take to the city council so that we can continue to proceed. And this is just kind of setting the tone for the, uh, the general plan. Let, let me indicate. <coughs> 
Plus, it's a pleasure to be with you here tonight, and pleasure to be in person <laughs> as well with you here tonight as well. Uh, as uh, Oliver, I'll just embellish a little bit about what Oliver said. This was a document that was very much crafted by the advisory committee, as members of the committee will respect. And they were actually involved in writing and providing the content of the text that you see in front of you tonight. We had three separate meetings <clears throat> over a period of time that uh, basically the committee looked at well over 1,400 comments that came in through that public uh, discussions, et cetera, that we recorded and documented as a part of the process as well. And so what you see here was a discussion that there were different ideas that were exchanged uh, in the meetings with the <clears throat> General Plan Advisory Committee. So what you see here is basically a consensus opinion, indeed, that grew out of this. I emphasize the importance of this um, uh, while we talk about this being very high level. But you think if you have an introduction to what is going to be the general plan, the preamble to the general plan, that is we move forward with the land use plan and each of the respective elements of the general plan, we'll be checking back to that vision statement to say, is this true? are these truly carrying forward those visions and those ideas? So that's all I just wanted to add to as well. And thank everybody who's been involved to this point because it's been a lot of time. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Garcia, can you come back up, please? All right, good evening, uh, Planning Commission and, and local members of the community. How are you guys doing? My name is Orlando Garcia. Um, I'm a member of this community. I live in the, the fifth where I live in Vermont Heights. So hearing you guys talk a little bit about that area and development, it's good, it's good to it's good to be familiar with the um, with the things that are going on in our community, right? So I have a couple of notes that I wanted to read uh, read to you guys, okay, in regards to the vision statement. And just to be clear, um, I'm looking at the vision, the draft vision statement online. Is that accurate, um, Wika? With the is that the accurate one with the on the city's website, the draft vision statement? Okay, I didn't get it in in text. So um, I'm a member of the Southwest Regional Council of Carpenters. Um, right here in this local area, proud member of Local 909, um, representing this area. Uh, also a proud member of the community in Vertimont Heights, uh, Ward 5. Um, I live here. I want to continue to live here and I have a couple bullet statements for you guys, okay? So in regards to this general plan and the project, um, including the downtown project, uh, I believe the city should require the project to be built utilizing local and skilled uh, trained workforce. Um, we need to put our people to work first, first and foremost. We're talking about a lot of this work. I think it's very important that we put our people directly to work uh, on the projects that are going to develop this community. Um, local hire and skilled and trained workforce requirements reduce the construction-related environmental impacts while benefiting the local economy. In a recent 2020 report uh, titled Putting California on the High Road, a Jobs and Climate Action Plan for 2030, the California Workforce Development Board concluded uh, that investments in growing, diversifying, and upskilling California's workforce can positively affect returns on climate mitigation efforts. Moreover, just this year, South Coast uh, Air Quality Management District found that the use of local state certified apprenticeship programs or a skilled and trained workforce with a local component can result in air pollution reductions. Again, putting our, our local hire and our local people. Uh, local community members to work. Other cities have uh, not hesitated to apply skilled and trained workforce, so it's already happening. Uh, requirements for private development uh, projects in their city, especially something of this magnitude, I think is very important for us to, to, to establish something like that. Um, recently, the city of Hayward in Northern California adopted skilled and trained workforce requirements into its general plan. So we're talking a, a long term here, um, the vision that we're going for, um, it's, it's already happening. There's cities that in, in our state that are doing it. Why not San Bernardino, right? Um, local skilled and trained workforce requirements can boost um, economic development and mitigate transportation and greenhouse gas impact by minimizing vehicle miles traveled. The obvious is not traveling way out to LA to do all the development or having uh, other areas travel to our area. Let's put our, our skilled uh, workforce um, to work right away. If you look at the vision statement, just pick, uh, piggybacking on some of the things I said, I mean some of the first words say here, city to live and work and play in distinguished area, right? So I believe that we should uh, really enforce that. And um, as we push this onto the city council, really uh, implement that, putting our people to work first. Thank you so much for your time. You guys have a good evening.
Thank you, Mr. Garcia. If there, if there isn't anyone else, I did want to uh, re respond as well to uh, to another. We received some correspondence from a Mitchell. Um, I won't attempt the last name, but it's spelled T S A I, um, attorney at law, and the uh, the letter is uh, that he submitted was more relative to the CEQA process, the environmental review of the of the of the uh, general plan, and so with that, uh, I'd like to comment or would like to respond by st simply stating that at this time it's not appropriate. Um, time to evaluate this. Um, he will be advised that when the public review period on the CEQA document or the EIR is per, um, released, that they will be informed for comment. But there really is no CEQA evaluation at this time, so therefore this, um, this letter does not apply. Thank you. Is that the letter we all received today? Yes. I do have a, another question. Do we have a local hiring ordinance? No, we, we do thinking not. thinking about it? We don't. No, we, we don't. We've got a lot that's getting ready to happen. We do not. Is that something to contemplate or do it, someone it, brings it, it up or what? I think it's been brought up enough. Yes, it will be contemplated. Okay. <laughs> Before we start building, right? Uh, okay, if I if I may be so bold, I'm not a voting member, so it's not up to me. But, but we, we've, uh, we, it, it has been discussed a lot. You know, we've talked right. about uh, community benefits and, and all those kinds of things. And so, like I said, this is a, we still got well over a year process on this, on the general plan. And so I'm sure that conversation will happen once or twice. Maybe every meeting. <laughs> <laughs> may, it may, may be. I would have to say at one time, and I don't know how far back it was, there was a uh, part of the, the code that allowed for a local contractors to give them um, there was a percentage that was um, reduced to the price or an advantage there was some kind of program set up for local businesses um, there were not a lot of union businesses a lot of not a not a lot of union companies in the area and so there was a situation to where um, <clears throat> there's non-union companies more so in this area and there was a benefit that was given for hiring I don't remember the program I don't know if it was through redevelopment or how it worked but there was a program of some sort. Uh, the, there, there are different approaches and I've been in other jurisdictions where they where they've uh, where they've mandated local hiring and inevitably what happens is that developer will come have to go back to the City Council ask for a, a, a a relief of that requirement because he said you know what I've been trying to hire and there's there's no one available you know and so um, there's there, there's special findings that the council has had to make this well okay for this particular project yes you did give an attempt there, there weren't um, you know there, there wasn't the, uh, the availability of of those of those particular workers and so yes you can go beyond that um, and so I mean there's there, there, there's there's a, a, a variety of ways to handle, you know, the local hiring, and a lot of it is, um, you know, what workforce you have available, you know, and so, um, you know, you hear the comment about, well, we you know we want we want better paying or high paying paying jobs, um, yet, um, you know, our, our high school and, and college graduation rate in San Bernardino is very low, you know, so, um, you know, so so there's a lot of a lot of components. So maybe it's job training. You know, and, and maybe it's maybe it's um, you know education. You know, uh, you know, country, you know uh, where there's uh, you know what what are we doing for education? You know, for for the trades. I mean, they don't. We were talking about this at the office. That you know, back 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 when I was a pup, you know, I was able to take wood shop and you know print shop and all that in in, in uh, junior high and high school kind of a thing. And the shop classes no longer exist. You know, so the the reality is not everyone is made to be a doctor or lawyer. You, you know, and a bit where do you, where do you learn how to how to, how to hammer a nail, you know, and so so there's 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 uh, certainly there there will be plenty of conversations of how do we how do we close that gap, you know, and, and certainly if there if there if there are jobs that are available and whether it's construction jobs or whatever the case is, we need to make sure that there that there is that available workforce to do those construction jobs. There are many trades in the construction also, you know, and so that's yeah. you know that's that that that's another thing, and so. Um, but yeah, I, I, those conversations, you know, I, I know will, you know, be one of one, one of many. Yeah, in this area, it seems as though it's always been a 
a problem to try and tie it to a condition in the general plan of that sort. So um, it, it's, I don't think that would work. And there's, uh, you know, and, and uh, on, my, on my limited experience, uh, you know, the, a lot of the conversation is, uh, you know, now are you excluding others? Exactly. You know, so, so now because I'm not a union person, I can't get a job. You know, so there's so th so there's those challenges as well. I have a question. Not all jobs do, do we pay prevailing wage if it's not a union prevailing wage? Because when I used to do contracts, we we had to make sure we did prevailing wage if it wasn't union. If it, if if there's city funds that are attached to it, usually you know there's the that's what they do. Their prevailing wage requirement. Okay. Yes. Are we anybody aware that Valley College has a certification program for trades? They just started. I heard that was coming up. It's starting. Okay. It's already starting. They're starting uh, this month, and I'm working with some of their people to uh, get some training in my sixth ward. So they've already started. So maybe we want to contact yep, that's them. A, that's encouraging. We'll, 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 we'll we have our. Our, our stakeholders list that we're that yeah. we that's constantly growing on that's folks to talk, talk with yes okay are there any more uh, comments on item number five I just want to kind of thank Oliver for addressing kind of the regional and local workforce kind of question I hope that kind of answered uh, mr. Garcia's kind of questions a little bit. Um, I, I understand there's, you know, different things that are involved in implementing that because it's the workforce isn't always necessarily in this area. Um, but whatever we can add, mm -hmm. I think that would be good. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else wishing to speak on number five? And this is just the vision statement we're approving, right? If I'd be so kind as to entertain a motion just to accept and move forward to the City Council, please. I need a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion that the Planning Commission receive and file the presentation of the vision statement. Uh, uh, well, the first, the first two, the uh, public participation and land use, uh, but then forward the recommendation for the, uh, the vision statement. I second. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Now we're going with the uh, public hearing items. Um, the Planning Commission will first hear a report from staff, and then a public hearing will be opened. The applicant will have an opportunity to speak, and next members of the public will be allowed to speak. Anyone in the audience wishing to speak must be sworn in and also fill out a request to speak form. The forms are located uh, near the door. When your name is called, come forward and speak into the microphone, say and spell your name, and give your address for the taped record. After all, has, after all have spoken, the applicant will be allowed to respond. The public hearing will then be closed, and the Planning Commission will begin deliberations and make a decision. All actions except general plan amendments and amendments to the Municipal Development Code are final actions unless an appeal is filed and a fee paid within 15 days to the Community Development Department. If you challenge the resulting action of the Planning Commission in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described in this agenda or in written correspondence delivered to the Community Development Department at or prior to the public hearing. So, um, staff report, please. Yes, good evening, Commissioners. Item number six tonight is conditional use permit 21-19. The proposed project is a self-storage facility containing approximately 92,000 square feet. It's comprised of three single-story buildings on 4.2 acres located at 1320 East Highland Avenue between Golden Avenue and Mountain Avenue, about 2,000 feet west of North Del Rosa within the commercial general one zone. Here we have a few renderings of the proposal. We have the leasing office here in this area. You can see some daytime action here. 
We have some landscaping. Here we have the location map located between North Golden Avenue and Mountain Avenue. Here we have the project site, remnants of a burnt down, half burnt down restaurant, some other uh, facilities that will be demolished. Um, so the owner and operator of the facility will be Insight Property Group via their property management company, Secure Space. Insight Property Group has been in operation since about 2018 and have 16 successful facilities throughout the Los Angeles area. The proposed self storage facility consists of three one-story buildings with a total of 607 units for rent. Access for the site will be provided from East Highland Avenue via two new commercial drive approaches, one for primary access to the west and the secondary driveway to the east for emergency access only. Access to the rental units will be gated and only accessible by employees, the fire department, and tenants with a gate code only. The parking for the site consists of 10 spaces which meet development code requirements. Landscaping for the project will consist of California black walnut, walnut sycamore, and live oak trees, along with various drought tolerant shrubs and ground cover that will exceed the necessary landscape of 15%. Densely planted vegetation and defensible landscaping will occur along the north and east property lines where there's already existing block walls to shield the adjacent residential properties from the facility. The architectural design for the leasing office and building A fronting the public right away will incorporate a mo modern alternating color scheme featuring smooth finished stucco in both light and dark tone gray over a high performance glazing clear glass storefront. The remainder of the storage facility buildings will accent alternating split face concrete masonry block and smooth face finished stone with several schemes of light and dark grays for modern articulation. Operations for the storage facility are seven days a week between 7 a.m. and 9 p.m. Monday through Saturday and 9 a.m. through 9 p.m. on Sundays. There will be up to three property managers on site for the duration of operating hours to enforce regulations. The site is secure with wrought iron fencing and gates across the frontage and drive aisles. Only tenants, employees, and fire department will have access to the storage facility units themselves and the aisleways accessing the storage facility. There will also be 24-hour video surveillance of the property. And here we have the existing site. Here we have the existing site looking east. This would be looking north west, the same northwest, and then looking north. We have a picture of the restaurant that was vandalized. Um, we had some vagrants living within it. Here we have the site plan. Here's building C, building A, building B. We would have the leasing office here with parking here and here entrance from East Highland here, and this is for emergency access only here, would be gated here, and also here, and that's the only way into the facility itself. Here's the floor plan for the 607 units. We have our elevations. We have building A with the leasing office here, building B, and building C. Here we have the landscaping plan. So we have decorative walk, block wall um, to the west side of the property here. They will be demoing this structure here. This is where the access gates start. This is the Knox box for fire and for emergency egress. Then we have along the existing block walls to the back side of the homes, there will be heavily dense vegetation defensible landscape that will not be accessible from this side nor from this side as it will be all enclosed, completely enclosed. So the only people that would be able to get back there is maybe facility maintenance to clean up what, uh, whatever debris they need to. So between here and here, you have about 10 feet of just nothing but landscaping and non-accessible area by on only by maintenance. And our recommendation tonight is the Planning Commission adopt resolution number 2022-007 finding the category of exemption 
and approving conditional use permit 21-19 based on the findings of fact and CEQA determination and subject to the recommended conditions of approval. And I could take any questions and our applicant is here to answer questions as well. Any questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, through the chair, I would like to um, revisit that area between the. Commissioner uh, Quill, with your permission, one second, right here. Yeah. Vice Chair Armstead, um, I'd ask you to open the public hearing. You could just state it right into the microphone then. Oh, I see here. I hereby open the, con the continued public hearing for item number six. And for the record, we're at 745 for opening the public hearing. Thank you. Commissioner Quill, you could continue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the area between the private residence and the storage unit, um, what, is the, what is that 5-foot or 10-foot area? So there's a 10-foot setback between that existing block wall and the face of the first storage building, which is C. This backside will be all decorative along the wall. So the residents will, will be seeing nothing but dense vegetation and trees all along in this area here. So that is a, condi a condition that we put within the resolution that they, they need to make it very dense and defensible so that it's not inviting to sleep there, camp there, or anything to that nature. But at the same time, when the residents are looking out their back windows, they're not just seeing a, a big storage center. They are seeing some some pretty some pretty landscape. Okay, most of those residents have their own fencing. It looks like it, there's a there's a block existing block wall all the way across here oh. and all the way across down. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was just curious about security in there because of the idea of um, people getting back in there and so so nobody would be able to get beyond this point and this point whatsoever. So all this is off limits unless you're actually a tenant, the fire department, or an employee with. And they all, it's all accessible by gate code access only. So they couldn't just open the gate and walk back there okay. at any time. But the, but the distance between the back wall of the storage and the private property of the resident, that's about a 10-foot area with a lot of trees? It's, yes. And it's that's been, accessible to perhaps homeless people? Unless they're jumping over through the resident's yard and jumping over their, oh. their, their block wall, no, it won't be. Okay. Th this will all be all enclosed on this side and this side, so there won't be any accessibility. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, since the applicant is here, if we if they wanted to add any comments to the staff report, Mike, would you like to step up to the public podium, sir? Thank you. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. Um, my name is Mike Tiakos. I'm here representing the development team at Insight Property Group. Um, it, it's great to be here tonight and great to present this project that we've been working with, with Mike and staff on the last several months. Um, I think Mike's presentation noted this, but um, currently the, the property is in, um, it, it's a struggling state right now. Um, there's been several acts of, of crime and, and uh, uh, vandalism on site as of late and uh, we're excited about having the opportunity to clean up the site and build three new class A fully climate controlled um, self storage buildings to, to the market. Um, um, a little bit about Insight, we've, we've been in business since 2018. Uh, we're a national self storage developer. Um, we have projects all across the country since 2018, we've developed roughly five and a half million square feet of self-storage across the country. Um, all of our stores are managed in-house. Uh, we have our own uh, property management brand, Secure Space, um, who will manage this facility. And um, our business plan is to hold assets long-term, meaning we're not like most typical developers that will build the asset, lease it up, and sell it. Our plan is to hold this for many years to come, to professionally manage the asset, to take care of the asset, to continue to invest money into the asset, and really uh, ensure that there, there's a sense of pride of ownership, and um, for not only for Insight, but for the community. So that's just sort of our, our vision for the project, and uh, I'm happy to answer additional questions that the commissioners may have. Thank you, Mr. Siaco. Do I say no? Uh, questions? 
Um, also, commissioners, um, we did have a change to one of the conditions within the resolution. Um, on page six of the resolution, it states uh, condition number seven, the site shall be completely enclosed with a six foot high solid decorative masonry wall, except for points of ingress and egress. Um, we agreed with the applicant that it would be asinine to stick another block wall between the storage building and the actual walls that are there now, and that may cause problems and issues later down the line. So we would just like to say um, instead that, uh, move to say that the decorative block wall will be positioned here on the west side with wrought iron fencing in the frontage with the access gates. And that, that was a change that we would like to make. Uh, you mentioned there's going to be a decorative masonry throughout, well, obviously, with the exception of that, uh, I believe, south or north side? No, north, yeah, north side and east side. side. Um, uh, on plans A3.01, I know I'm getting real specific on some of the plans, um, it shows a plain block. I don't know. Is What's that? I'm sorry? It, was, it showed plain block rather than decorative or... Is the ap applicant um, amenable to putting a decorative block wall on the west side of the property there? Sure. Instead of a plain block wall to add some accent and architecture to it? Absolutely, yeah. Right. yeah. Perfect, sure. thank you. I agree to that. Um, and then we, uh, one of the, also the conditions wow. was a residence quarter, you know, it was, they said that there might be a live-in manager and this and that, and so mm -hmm. I wanted clarification. So we will not have a live-in manager on okay. site. Um, they will, um, be on site during store hours, which uh, 7 a.m. to 9 mm -hmm. um, on Monday through Saturday, and then um, 10 a.m. To, to 9 p.m. on, on Sundays. Um, but we will not have our manager living on site. Okay, perfect. Um, and then uh, we did actually get some comments from uh, residents of uh, Monte Vista Drive. Uh, I don't know if you also received the, I did. the, the comments. Um, Thank you. I, when I was looking over the uh, conditions of approval, I actually hadn't seen anything in terms of surveillance cameras, but Mike mentioned that it is added in there. I just didn't see it in the conditions. So uh, thank you for mentioning it. So apparently it's been added, so that's great. Um, they also mentioned um, several other little things, uh, but I think something that was important was you guys are going to be maintaining everything. Um, let me see. The dumpsters and everything, is there going to be an enclosed space for that? So that fully way, enclosed, that's fully correct. Enclosed. Perfect. Honestly, I think the project looks great. Uh, I saw also some secret requirement things that were on there, some constraints. Has that all been addressed? Because I know there was it's okay. all been addressed um, in, in the CEQA document and um, been deemed to not have a adverse um, impact on the environment. So it's been all addressed. Wonderful. Okay. I think honestly that was it. I think the project looks really great. Um, I like that your renderings actually of like kind of the front and the entrance of that, uh, it actually had a dark feature, almost like if it was nighttime. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> which is very unique and different compared to everything that's usually in the sun and the light. Um, thank you for kind of taking into consideration the, the neighborhood that's right there. Um, and I know they seem pretty excited about having something that'll be cleaner, nicer, you know, taken care of. Um, I think their major factor was just kind of, is there going to be, you know, management? Are they going to take care of it? Because they've seen a lot of what's been happening, the vandalism and the kind of burning and such. Sure, sure, so. yeah. We feel the same way, and uh, like I said, we're, we're excited to clean up this property and, and bring a new life to it, so um, yeah. certainly excited for that. And thank you for, uh, you know, going in for the long term with that for actually, yeah. No, yeah, yeah, I mean, we've, we've developed 60 stores across the country, and that's just kind of our business plan, so um, we will be property owners uh, in the community for, for many years to come, and will maintain the, the asset well and manage it well, and there will always be adequate security and lighting on site, so. Thank you. If I may, commissioners, we did uh, receive some correspondence from Commissioner uh, Flores uh, via, via email, um, and maybe a, a appropriately addressed to the applicant. The first was, uh, what, if any, energy efficient features will be incorporated into this project? 
And then along with that, uh, solar roof panels seem like an obvious feature that the building operator and our environment would benefit from. Uh, we have not included solar um, roof panels um, to date. Um, I will say this, self-storage is um, uh, an ener energy efficient use. Um, we don't use a whole lot of energy. There's not a whole lot of foot track it, traffic in and out of the facility. So from an energy efficient standpoint, uh, I certainly think we would qualify there. I'd also like to mention that at the time of building submittal, they will have to satisfy Title 24 and green code construction. Um, so they will, they will have to turn in some sort of format showing that they are meeting those, those uh, standards. Also, um, we did notice um, condition number six for the operating hours. It says from seven to eight, Monday through Saturday. It's supposed to be from seven to nine. So I'll have to make that adjustment within the resolution. Are you okay with that, sir? So, yeah, that's, that's fine. And um, also there is, um, yes, also, also we'll add the conditions for the surveillance cameras. I see it's not in this resolution, but we will go ahead and add that as a condition. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, I, I hadn't seen it. I saw the lights, but I didn't see anything about the surveillance. So it'll be from Monday to Saturday, 7 to 9 p.m., and then Sunday from 9 to 9. That's correct. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. And then the surveillance will be 24 hours? 24 hours. Yes. Perfect. All right. Wonderful. I, I do have a question because nobody wants to see a block of concrete. This landscaping is pretty deep so we don't have to see block walls. Yes, it's set back about 10 feet, and there's a wrought iron gate there, so it'll, it'll be really heavily dense. Just the line of sight issues that we will have, we'll have to keep them low-lying shrubs and some maybe 24-inch box trees, but it's not going to look too horrible from the, from the street at all because it's all going to be landscaped. Six. If not, I hereby close the public hearing. And Vice Chair Armstead, before you do that, before you close the public hearing, I would uh, invite you to ask the applicant if he agrees with all of the other conditions of approval. Yes, sir. Yes, we do. Now you can close the public hearing. Okay. Now I hereby close the public hearing. And I need a motion. Um, I propose a motion to pass item number six with the amenities of introducing the security camera, the um, masonry wall, the decorative wall, if that, the different little things that we've, we've mentioned here. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Any abstain? So moved. Congratulations. And Thank welcome. you very much. Thank you for your Thank time. you very much, Commissioners. Staff report, please. Yes, Commissioners. Item number seven involves subdivision number 21 10 is for tentative track map 20477. The proposed project is a subdivision for a nine acres, for, or, or, excuse me, nine lots for single family residences. It's approximately 3.15 acres see, within the residential low zoning classification. Property is located on the northeast corner of North Olive Avenue and West Ohio Avenue. This is the uh, sh this exhibit shows the zoning of the property, which is the uh, the residential low, and then the uh, the yellow below it is the residential suburban. This shows the uh, the, the property it being vacant, again surrounded by the, um, the single family residences residences. So the uh, residential low, which pr this property is in, requires larger lot sizes. As, so if you look at the ones to the uh, to the left of the slide there, those lot sizes are larger, which will be uh, uh, similar to those that are being proposed here. Those that are across the street, if you could tell that's a little bit smaller, that's because that zoning classification allows for smaller lots. As mentioned, so there are nine single family residential lots. The min minimum lot size is, is uh, 10,000 square feet. Maximum lot size that's being proposed is 23,000. Uh, 
square feet and the average lot size within this project area is 15,268 and direct access will be off of Olive and Ohio this is looking at, at the uh, at the site here again vacant and we've got the uh, the two uh, Ohio and, and Olive there next to it this is the, the the track map that's proposed again how the lots will be subdivided so we'll have the three the the street on the bottom is Ohio so you'll have three streets that three of the lots will front off of Ohio which would uh, I see how shaky my hand is these here so they'll, they'll they'll have access off of Ohio Avenue here and then as you turn the corner this is Olive and so then you'll have these six lots these two lots will have, will be flag lots here this dimension here is per our city standards so their their access will be directly off of off of this at this time the applicant is only proposing the subdivision he will be required to return with the homes as as as, as you've seen in the past and so um, we did receive a comment from Commissioner Flores on this particular one as it related to what measures because of the high wind and fire areas in this location the uh, the the, uh, the uniform building code does have specific requirements for construction for for projects or houses that are in high fire or high wind zones so um, that will be addressed at the time that the home has come back for for review uh, with that uh, our recommendation is the Planning Commission adopt resolution 2022-008 finding the project is exempt pursuant to section 15332 for infill projects and approving subdivision 21 dash 10 for a tentative map 20477 that concludes my presentation I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any thank you I hereby open the public hearing item for item number seven uh, is the applicant here yes Uh, did you want to add anything to the report just to kind of no he was um, able to uh, kind of explain everything um, in regards to myself my name is Julio Vargas I'm the um, I guess president of the company I've uh, been doing construction on the general contractor the developer as well been doing construction for the last 10 years um, I have a little bit of a weird background I went to UC Santa Barbara have an accounting degree I went to Pepperdine University. I have a finance. M I have an MBA uh, in finance and global business. I worked in the corporate world. Worked at Target Corporation. Worked at Amazon up north. Um, but all along, I've been doing construction, and I realized at Amazon that I was working way too much mm -hmm. and not making enough money. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was doing one property at a time, and I would say, man, I'm, I'm making more money with one property. Than working uh, 80 hours a week as a senior operations manager I oversaw a team of uh, 3,000 associates up in Oakland and I was you know making decent money but um, I was doing one property every year and I would say man you know and I'm doing this part-time and I'm you know spending 10 hours uh, a week with the construction and I'm spending 80 hours at Amazon so uh, I decided to uh, focus in construction I was able to get my license and um, you know, with uh, the support of my family, uh, we have a, a team of about 20 uh, construction workers, and uh, that's what we do. Last year, we were able to build 17 brand new homes out in the uh, Inglewood area, and uh, we found this opportunity. Um, we ran numbers, we looked at comparables, and uh, we liked the uh, the neighborhood as well. So that's that's what we're here. Well, thank you, Mr. Vargas, for uh, choosing San Bernardino. I mean, uh, this will actually really add to the numbers that we needed, you know, for the city. And um, obviously, we don't have renderings of the house yet, so we can't really comment on, you know, yes. protection for, you know, fire and, you know, walls for wind and such like that. But I think this would be great, you know, addition. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else wishing to speak on item number seven? not I close the public hearing section and I need a motion I 
I'll make, make a motion. A motion. <laughs> oh, I make a motion. <laughs> In a second. Oh, I make a motion that we request to allow the subdivision of parcel containing approximately blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I second that motion. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Congratulations. You know, I've been doing this for a while. I've never heard that kind of motion before. <laughs> Like they say, you, yes, when you think you've heard it all, right? <laughs> I said it all. <laughs> it covers it all. <laughs> okay, number eight. Um, it's a development code uh, amendment. Um, I am asking something. Can you put it in English? Okay. In layman's terms. <laughs> <laughs> I will. And I, I, as I was rushing to put it together, I, I was, when I was printing it, I go, maybe I should have did it in larger than eight font. You know, but uh, we'll get it next time. Commissioners, item number eight is Development Code Amendment 22-01. It, it addresses the home occupation permits. This kind of came up recently um, here within the last uh, last month or so. Uh, you know, we um, kind of in our staff report. You know, uh, you know, times have changed. You know, people are working more from home. Not just in the telecommuting, but also of home occupations, um, with uh, with the advent of computers and technology, you know it's uh, you know we come to realize that our um, standards for home occupations were a little outdated. We did uh, we did survey some of our local surrounding cities, or quite a few in the Inland Empire, and um, the uh, the regulation of home occupations from the stand, stand, standard of the number. Um, there's no, there aren't any jurisdictions anymore that limit how many you can have. So, you know, it can be it can be a household, and you know, you have, you know, you have, have two, two or three, three people hold it, living there, or even even an individual. You know, you can have a you can be a you know a, a, a do do income taxes. You could do real estate, and, and you know, you could do a, a couple of other other businesses. Uh, but for whatever reason, you need a, a, a separate license for each one, maybe for financing or, or, or whatever the case is, or, or banking purposes, what have you. And so um, our code does not allow for that to happen, you know. So if I, um, so in any, any of it, um, our, our direction was to come to the Planning Commission with some, uh, to, to re relieve that so that uh, not to limit the number of home occupations. We still have some other standards that are that are that are involved. If you looked at the at the resolution, you know we still you know the types of businesses that you can do. You know you can't have you know you can't manufacture or, or construct something there. You can't have customers coming in and out. You can't have commercial vehicles um, there on, there on your property. So it's really really more intended to um, kind of keep up with the times, if you will. Where it's really a lot of home occupations these days that we see are really more like I said computer. Um, computer-based kind of thing, you know, internet sales and, and those kind of things. And so um, kind of, uh, you know, our code was last, our development code uh, was last uh, adopted in, in 1991. So, so it's, it's, it's been a minute since it's been uh, re revitalized. I mean, we do amendments here and there, you know, as, as you recall, when we do other development code amendments, you know, whether it's noticing requirements or ADUs, you know, we, you know, as new, new measures come, come along. But um, again, as, so it's been it's been a while since the whole code has been thoroughly analyzed. Um, that's part of our of our general plan exercise as well. We are looking to update the entire development code um, as, as part of that exercise too. So that'll be some other some more homework that we'll have for you and some easy reading for you to do on the weekends. But uh, so it's been a while. And again, like like I said, the the, the advancements in technology and just kind of the dynamics of household. Households, uh, you know, kind of warrants this. And again, I, as I mentioned, it was a city-initiated, um, you know, proposal. So basically, our, our code is, is really to uh, our, it currently limits it to one home occupation, and we basically want to say that there isn't there isn't a limit. It, you can you can have a multiple um, ocu, ocu, uh, home occupations, but you just need a, you just need a separate license for each one. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Our, our recommendation is that you adopt. Resolution 2022-009, uh, with the with the CEQA exemption, because there's no no um, environmental impacts because of the nature of a code amendment, and that do we move this item to the city council for their consideration with the recommendation of approval? I'd be glad to answer any questions. That concludes my presentation. Thank you. Vice Chair Armstead, I'd like to add two things. Um, the first is. 
this proposed amendment will not apply to the vast majority of people working from home. And that's because some new language in here says the following. Notwithstanding the foregoing, no home occupation permit shall be required pursuant to this chapter if the person engaged in the performance of work as an employee for an entity whose principal place of business is located elsewhere and the use of the dwelling generates no pedestrian or vehicular traffic beyond that customarily associated with the use of the unit for residential dwelling purposes. So that language is going to carve out 90% of people working from home, like I work from home. This wouldn't apply to me. Okay, so I just want to make that clear. So the vast majority of people working from home, they're not going to have to come and apply for a home occupation permit. That's not what this does. The second thing is, because this is a development code update, our code requires an affirmative five votes. Since there's only five of you here tonight, we need a unanimous vote for this to pass. I didn't understand what it was saying. So say you're a, a self-employed business and you have more than, you got real estate and you've got, I don't know, um, engineering and whatever. You're doing three occupations out of this one residence. That means you need three different permits? I'm, I'm not clear. If you're, if you're operating, yeah, yeah, the answer, the answer of question would be, it would, it would be yes. I understood what you were saying because you're working for someone else, so it doesn't pertain to you. Like when they send us home to because we, back uh, when they sent us home because of yeah. COVID, what have you, we we're working from home. That you're that just you're pertain. just doing you're just doing your regular job at your telecommuting or, or whatever the case is. Okay. But if you're if you're opening up a new business and you say, well, okay, I'm what whatever whatever type and and again, you may not need it. I mean, it it, it could be for you know um, you know it depends on how you file your taxes or how you report, you know, if you have fictitious names, some people do that for whatever reason, mm -hmm. they, they, that they want to separate their, you know, right. you can just be Oliver Mojica, you know, whatever, and, and, and I can, and I do three or four different things. It's, it's still one business license kind of thing. But if, but if, mm -hmm. but if I want to do separate banking and, and those kinds of things, you know, uh, you know, my income taxes and, and you know, you have income and, you, and it's separate, you know, I'll have Oliver Mojica one, two, three will be business number one and business number two will be three, four, five. You know what I mean? If, if you have multiple. Those are different licenses. Those are different. Those would be different licenses. Clarify it. Okay. Yes. It came up because we had a husband and wife that uh, we had the, the wife already had a, a, a home occupation. A gentleman came in innocently wanting to get a, 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 a home occupation for his, for his business that he was going to start a brand new business. And then we, we had to tell them, well, you know, we, we had to do a code amendment because and that, and that was, like I said, it was a regular occurrence. And so we, we mm -hmm. sat around, I spoke with the city manager, and I said, you know what, maybe it's time we, we change this. Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. For the clarification. You're welcome. Okay. Um, I'm hereby open it up for public hearing on item number eight. Um, I just had one comment. Um, seeing that the last amendment or when it was brought in was in 1991, the year I was born, um, I'm glad. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really glad. To, I, I was 31 at that time. <laughs> it says May, so it was actually enacted before I was born, but, you know, just clarification. But um, just wanted to say thanks for making these amendments because I do know that there's a lot of startup, you know, businesses. There's, you know. Yeah whole things about it, like, you know, on, on uh, different sites and everything, Etsy, Instagram, like that. Everyone's kind of building their own little thing. So thank you for kind of opening this up so little companies can start and then hopefully build into something bigger that can get into our city and, you know, make a boutique. So uh, thank you. Any other comments on item number eight? I, I have a question. Oliver, has the city uh, experienced any... Um, Complaints perhaps from residents with people having businesses in their neighbor neighborhood traffic or anything like that Not really not in the not in the seven plus years that I've been here mm. You know, which is you know, it's I won't, won't say that it's a surprise, but no there hasn't Any other comments 
Then I hereby close the public hearing and I need a motion. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 2022-009. Second. I'll second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Congratulations, Office <laughs> Oliver. <laughs> um, is this a director's report or no? Oh, it is. Okay. I really have nothing new to uh, to report, um, other than we um, we have our next uh, general plan advisory committee meeting on the seventeenth Thursday, um, and it will be here at uh, six o'clock. Other than that. That's all I have. Thank you. Eighteenth or seventeenth? Oh, on the seventeenth. Yes, seventeenth. I have a question back to the website, the city website that was presented. Um, do we do we have anything on there on anything on the website pertaining to code enforcement? as far as um, perhaps um, existing uh, code complaints or, or violations or issues? I don't believe so. I don't think so? No. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Okay, are, are we adjourned? We need a motion. A motion to adjourn? I need a motion. I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved.